Welcome to Common Sense. It's a interview program where we interview interesting people from our community that uh, to get some clear and concise information about different issues that they have, and uh, but also mainly to find out from their standpoint what does make sense and what doesn't make sense. I'm Casey Zuber. Today I'm going to be interviewing Rudy Breglia. Hi. But, Glad you're here, Rudy. Rudy's an Avon Lake resident. Uh, he's retired, and he um, he's an advocate for uh, seatbelts and school buses. And uh, Rudy, we're glad you're coming in today. And you know the format here, so we want people to talk a little bit about themselves. You know, in the beginning, you know where you grew up, so we can get a sense of you as a person. Okay, well, uh, uh, I, I grew up in, in New York City. Uh, uh, many people have the idea of, you know, big high-rise buildings and whatever, but I lived in a residential area and uh, there was a, a, few, a few doors down from me was a, a fairly large park and uh, I spent a lot of time there okay. uh, growing up and uh, enjoyed uh, every minute of it. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, but I, uh, we've come to Avon Lake and uh, 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 I'm married and I, I had uh, three, we had three boys and now uh, we have four grandchildren. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, Is that what uh, brought you to Avon Lake? Well, I, uh, I worked for BP. Okay. Uh, and uh, then I moved around a little bit, but I came okay. back to here. Uh, 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 we call uh, Avon Lake Happy Valley. You yeah, know, it's I believe, very, yes, very happy it's, here. It's, it's, we have a lot of people there, because I've been talking to a lot of people that are very uh, enthusiastic, I guess, about Avon Lake. So you said you worked for BP. Were you involved in any issues in regards to safety with them or anything like that or sort of what got you involved in this seatbelt and bu school bus issue okay well um <clears throat> uh for uh, um, i'm uh, uh, trained as an industrial toxicologist and uh, i ran uh, programs for chemical companies, uh, petrochemical companies, uh, 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 to help them with their products. Uh, I, uh, uh, in, in that capacity, I was always in a health environment and safety group. Uh, I was the health part and uh, uh, I interacted with the safety folks and the environmental folks quite a bit. And uh, so uh, when uh, 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 in uh, November of uh, 2016, uh, I received, uh, we all received a, a wake up call when a uh, school bus uh, without seat belts rolled over in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee and uh, killed uh, six children injured 26 the only one who was uninjured was a the school bus driver and that's because he had a seat yeah. belt on uh these kids were between six and ten years old sure. and uh, three of them were actually ejected from the bus and uh, they really had no chance because uh, they didn't have this basic safety tool uh, mm -hmm. Of uh, seat belts and and when I say seat belts, I'm talking about the lap shoulder belts sure. that you have in uh, every uh, passenger car. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, my safety background, uh, 40 years uh, of, of my career was uh, sure. right there looking at safety. Well, so what now do is involved in the safety aspect in school buses? Well. Uh, 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 and, and the one point I wanted to make uh, was that there are 1,200 uh, school bus okay. crashes in Ohio every year, about okay. that number. Really? So, uh, you know, we really have something that we need to be concerned sure. about. And I would think that if that's in Ohio, you could only imagine what it is across the nation, oh, too. Oh, yeah, right, right. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, uh, currently, uh, the... Uh, uh, safety features that are in Ohio school buses are inadequate to protect children fully. And I, 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 uh, I really believe in that word inadequate uh, uh, in reference to these safety uh, features. And I can say that because 
uh, six to, in the United States, six to seven children are killed every year, and more than 17,000 are injured uh, in uh, school bus incidents. Sure. The, uh, 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 there are, uh, right now, there are uh, three school districts in Ohio that are purchasing uh, uh, new replacement school buses with seat belts. Uh, and they're uh, Avon Lake, which was the first to do this. And, uh, you know, I, I have to give credit to the school board and the uh, superintendent of schools, Bob uh, Scott, for being uh, courageous enough, uh, to uh, thoughtful enough, and uh, 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 have enough leadership that they're willing to go out and sure. do this first and be and be the leaders right. in this uh, area. And, well, um, a lot of that's because of the work that you've done too. I mean, you've been doing this for some time. Oh, uh, right. Talking about it and working with those different people yeah, like that. Uh, uh, about five years. Right. And uh, you know, I can't say enough about Bob Scott. I I think he he should get a pay increase in his his next pay review. <laughs> uh, can I say that? Well, I don't well, yeah, know. Well, well, okay. Uh, don't tell him I said that. Okay. okay. Well, All right. Well, I'm sure that we're going to have him on the show sometime. Oh, yes. So, yes. So, um, uh, so right. maybe if I interview him, I won't say anything. But okay. if you do, right. then okay. you, can, you can the, do that. Uh, so the, it's Avon Lake yeah. that's uh, a bit in the bullet and has a, a pilot program where they purchase two new school buses mm -hmm. with seat belts. Hudson has done the same, has a pilot program. And Beachwood is a little bit different in that they're fully committed. They raised a quarter of a million dollars at really? the suggestion of a third grade class who are part of a civics lesson, uh, oh, sure. making recommendations to the city council. With this quarter of a million dollars, they're going to be buying all their new school buses with seat belts already installed. Right. So it's, it's, it's really great that we have these three school districts doing this. And I think we're at a turning point right. where Ohio will uh, probably, uh, you know, with a couple, three more school sure. districts doing this, that the whole state will right. wind up. Right, and you, what you find with some of these things that it starts getting on a little bit of a roll. Now, since there aren't really many school buses that have seatbelts in them, what happens when a bus is in a crash and the oh. children don't have any Seat belts. Okay. Well, uh, uh, you're you're going to be seeing uh, a, a little bit of a video that was produced by a company called Emmy. They showed in, in a simulation what uh, uh, it looks like inside of a school bus okay. when you have a rollover, uh, and that's when the kids have absolutely no protection. And in the video that uh, you're going to be seeing on the screen, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, children without seat belts wind up going flying through the cabin, hitting the roof of the uh, school bus, and uh, uh, you, you can imagine what sure. damage is done to these kids uh, by by looking at the video. Whereas the kids who have the seat belts are uh, uh, very uh, uh, they're stable, they remain in place, uh, uh, they may be a little bit disoriented because of the crash, sure. but uh, they're uninjured and conscious and able to help themselves or their right. classmates right. if they're uh, belted in. Yeah, if they're now, belted in. Right. Now, uh, federal agencies in the 1970s, they made a compromise and they uh, uh, selected a padded seat backs over uh, seat belts, and um, uh, the uh, uh, they base this on a flawed and incomplete theory of protection uh, called uh, compartmentalization. This uh, uh, is um, uh, this theory of protection is uh, crude and violent uh, uh, means, and uh, it. Uh, uh, it, it, it's meant to minimize injuries, but not to prevent them. Well, it, but I think that probably the, the other thing with that is it was a money thing. I'm well, sure that <laughs> I'm sure that there was they, there was something happened there. They had the you know because I mean how long have we had seatbelts in cars? 
since 1968. Right, yeah, I remember as a kid uh -huh. when seatbelts first came out in cars, but you would, I mean, it would just be a common sense thing from the way that I look at it. If they're good, one cars in 68, school buses have a lot more um, kids riding in them that they didn't make, them, and they made up this, uh, I guess, this study Compromise. You know, well, yeah, compromise, but, you know, it's, that's... Well, a, yeah, uh, I, I agree, uh, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about cost later on. Yeah. But, uh, do, um, do the buses, I mean, there's got to be some studies on places where they've had crashes with kids with seat belts as compared to without. Right. Uh, there was a, a, a crash in, uh, in California where... Uh, uh, the in California they do have seat belt uh, they have uh, lap shoulder seat belts required in their buses and uh, the uh, uh, federal agency that was that's responsible for uh, 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 school bus safety the uh, it's called NHTSA National Highway Traffic Safety Administration uh, they did an analysis and they found that uh, the lap shoulder belts made a big difference in the injuries that children sustained uh, in, in this uh, school bus accident. So right. You're, you're right, right in saying there are there is data that supports. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and, and, you know, so much of when you look at things now, although things can be skewed, but you want to look at the data. And, and, it, and I mean, but to me, it's more of a common sense thing, too. I mean, if you've had... Hence the name of the program. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, to, to get back, though, to uh, what, we're, what I was saying before, the, the basis for the compartmentalization theory, the, the reason mm. the uh, federal agents uh, chose it, is uh, the basis for the theory is that you have a, uh, a seat back, okay? Right. And that is meant to absorb the impact energy of airborne children's bodies that take off in a uh, in in a crash situation. So you have uh, imagine this: you have a six-year-old that maybe mm. weighs 50 pounds hitting the back of uh, the seat in front of them uh, with their face at 30 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. That's where the it's meant to minimize that injury rather than to prevent it. Well, well yeah. uh, if you had seat back belts, yeah. that child would never right. hit the back of that. Right. Well, anyway, so that's the basis. Now, the theory is most effective when the bus is going slow, when it's a forward crash, and all the children are seated properly. Sure. And by properly, I mean yeah. sitting yeah. upright, facing forward, with both feet on the ground. Well. I it, and how often does that happen? Like it doesn't happen, right? Exactly. I mean, I remember as a kid, we would come home from. I would be in the bus riding home from Erie View School, and we would on Electric Boulevard was bumpy then, and we would bounce up and down to try and hit the bump, so we would almost hit the ceiling. I mean, that was. I see. I, I mean, well, so I kids, mean, like but... you said, yeah, no kid just sits there on the bus like this, you right. know. Well, they're, they're talking to their neighbor, yeah, right, they're, right. they're over the seat in front right. of them, uh, talking to that neighbor or, or sure. disturbing that neighbor sure, somehow. Sure, sure. So uh, if any of those conditions that I mentioned are not met, the theory starts to fail. Sure. You know, uh, if you're uh, walking across or, or bothering the kid that's uh, on the other s side of the aisle, uh, you yeah. know, the theory fails, uh, and right. it fails completely when you have rollovers or sure. side crashes. Sure. Uh, and then it, uh, all bets are off. The um, uh, North Carolina did a 10-year study where they, f they found that one-third of all their uh, of all the crashes of the school buses were of the rollover or the side crash type where the kids have no protection right. at all. And not surprisingly, accounted for 80% of the injuries sure. that occur in, right. in those situations. Now, what you talked about North Carolina, California, what, what states do mandate or do... Oh, have man laws? Uh, yeah, right. They okay. mandate that do you have to have... Okay, well, See, there's uh, nine states that uh, have laws uh, uh, requiring seat belts, okay? okay? There's uh, 
uh, let's see if I can name California, mm -hmm. Nevada, uh, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, Iowa. Iowa is the most recent one. Uh, Florida, uh, uh, New Jersey, and uh, uh, New York. Uh, mm -hmm. New Jersey converted from lap belts to sh uh, lap shoulder belts oh, right. uh, oh, oh, about two years ago when they had a big crash and a teacher died and a, and a, and a student died. Uh, uh, and so they, uh, they went with lap shoulder belts. Uh, yeah, instead. Time. Yeah. 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 Uh, which, which are the safest. Uh, lap belts are better than nothing, but uh, the lap shoulder belts well, are I, the best. I mean, it, to me, it's a common sense thing, but what other are... Benefits? Or, well, not benefits, but what other mandates do... How else are seat belts mandated? I mean, you have to wear a seat belt in your car when you're driving. Are there any other? Oh, okay. Uh, the seat belts are required in cars since 1968, right. in small school buses since 1977. That's okay. less than 10,000 pounds, and uh, in uh, uh, motor coaches since 2016. Uh, that was the result of a, a bill uh, that was sponsored by. Uh, uh, our own uh, senator, uh, Portman Brown. Uh, no, uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, and uh, 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 I'm I'm sorry, it's Sherrod Brown. Okay, and uh, he actually wrote a letter at my request sure. to the uh, oh, uh, Avon Lake Board of Education yeah. to support sure. trials of uh, seat right. belts in, right. in school buses. So. Uh, uh, those are the uh, requirements right now. Right. And uh, now I can think of, I mean, even, I mean, you're talking about a safety issue with uh, seat belts, but I would think that there's other things too uh -oh. that are helpful if if you force the kid to put on a seat belt when he's in the bus. Okay. Well, a, a big secondary benefit that you have from seat belts is uh, you have an improvement in behavior, and uh, that improvement in behavior winds up practically eliminating bullying occurring sure. on the bus because you know they're in place, so right. they're not going to be able to bully right. other kids. Right now, uh, and the other thing it does is it restores order on the bus and you have a, a much calmer atmosphere right. and because of that uh, you have drivers that are less distracted right. and because they're less distracted you have less of uh, driver uh, caused uh, crashes uh, so uh, it has a big second uh, although it improves behavior it also improves safety sure you know you can imagine a school bus driver with chaos going on behind them right uh, right they're going to be distracted right. and they're going to be you know screaming at the kids I right. mean, and stuff and, like that and 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 uh, by improving this work environment for the driver you actually uh uh, you have better driver retention. And that's one of the big problems these days. Uh, uh, you have people leaving the industry because of that, uh, sure. that adverse uh, uh, work environment that they have to deal with. And I frankly don't know how they can do it day after right, day. Right. right. Now, you said some of the states do have mandates on them. What's the cost? I mean, how much does it cost? How well, much extra does it cost on a bus, or what's the cost oh, okay. that we're looking at for All something right. like this? Well, uh, for a new school bus, it adds about 8 to 10% onto the price of a bus. So a bus is, it'll cost around $90,000, so you're looking at about another $8,000. Right. But uh, if you look at it over the... Uh, uh, the lifetime of the bus, which uh, in Avon Lake is probably around 15, 16 years, really? it winds up uh, driving down the cost uh, per year. You have uh, uh, three cents a student a day or five dollars a student a year. But uh, the, the thing is that uh, that's uh, five dollars a student a year is only 0.6 percent. It's less than 0.6 percent of the total cost of uh, transporting a student. Uh, so uh, you know, it, it it's really 
pretty minimal, uh, the, sure. the, the cost that's involved. And you do have some savings because you have less crashes, less injuries. Well, you yeah, and, and I think it's and less um, distraction for the drivers. It's just it makes things easier and cleaner. I mean, making the kids do it, I think, is a problem. But I think that anymore now, I mean, they're used to it because... You know, any kid nowadays has been in a in a child safety seat in a car. Any time now that they get in a car, they buckle up. So this would be something that that would just be the continuization of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The uh, 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 kids uh, these days they have the safety habit, and actually adults do as well. Uh, right. Studies sure. were done. They eighty-five to ninety percent of the people who are out on the road use their seat belts. And I know my own family, uh, uh, my grandchildren uh, won't let me operate the car unless everybody's buckled up. We all yell clear when right. we're buckled up. Uh, as sure. they're getting older, they're, they're, uh, you don't even have to right, think about right. it. Right, you know, and I think that that's something that gets, this would help get the kids in understanding that. Yeah. Um, now, is there, is it, the cost, the reason why schools don't do this, or is it just something that has been brought to their attention? Or uh, the uh, uh, cost is a big item. Uh, uh, I've talked to uh, you know uh, I've gone out to many school districts uh, and talked to the superintendents, the uh, supervisors of pupil transportation, uh, uh, and uh, cost is a big factor. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, these school districts that uh, 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 think this way don't think long term. Right. Uh, they're not thinking of the total life of the bus, and uh, uh, you know there's uh, maybe some leadership problem right. there. Uh, right, but and, and you have you got the prop here. That yes, uh, I have a, 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 a seat assembly. Uh, the, uh, that uh, this one was made by the same people who produced that uh, simulation that you saw, the video okay. simulation, and um, that shows a little bit what it looked like. Uh, yeah, that this is exactly what it looks like in uh, the uh, the school buses that Avon Lake has purchased that have it, and and the same ones that Hudson does, and this goes into the. The, the second uh, reason why uh, school districts okay. resist the idea, and that's uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they have misinformation that, have, that has evolved over okay. the years. Uh, one of the things that, uh, 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 one piece of misinformation is that uh, you, uh, if, once you install seat belts, then you're limiting the capacity of the, uh, uh, of the bus. And uh, uh, this problem, this issue was overcome maybe about 10 years ago uh, when uh, a flex seat was developed. And, and you can see in, in this seat assembly, you have three seat belts. And uh, you could either put uh, three fourth graders here without any trouble, there's plenty of room. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, uh, you have two high school football players uh, uh, who are more advanced gra the grades and they're, they're larger. And right. so you would put two of them in, in this right. setup. So it's, it's flexible. And uh, so that problem really goes away. Right. Um, uh, one of the other problems that uh, issues that are brought up is they say, well, you're, you know, you, uh, you'll buy the seat belts and the kids won't use them. Well, uh, and we talked about it before, uh, kids have the safety habit. So right, they're gonna, right. if seat belts are there, they're probably going right. to buckle up and, and not complain about it at all. Uh, sometimes uh, with the middle schoolers and the high right. schoolers, you might need to prompt them and uh, right. remind them that they should right. be in their seat right. belts. Right. I mean, it's, it's just like anything. You're not, you can tell them they need to do it, but, you know, are you going to force them to do it and stuff like that? And, you know, but I think most people and, you know, I think... Uh, to it, it's going to happen. Right, it's right. Going to yeah, they, it's just automatically going to do. I mean, are there any groups that oppose this? I mean, it's to me, it's a common sense type of thing. I mean, well, well, there was one other thing I wanted okay. to get to. Uh, uh, the uh, 
uh, it is a new practice. Even though the seat belts have been in place right. since 1968, for the school district, uh, they haven't had the seat belts in their, in their buses. So it is a new practice and uh, training has to be developed and communications. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, uh, there needs some time for adjustment, okay? And, and the, the last thing I wanted to say was, you know, uh, uh, the, there really is a reason for school districts to get involved in this. And, and uh, I'm, although I'm not an attorney, right. uh, there's a liability issue. Uh, if, uh, 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 if you have student injuries, the school district is uh, uh, liable for uh, unlimited compensatory damage award. Right. Uh, for those injuries. Yeah. And uh, if you have kids flying down the highway without seat belts, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it represents a uh, disaster waiting to happen, like yeah. Chattanooga. Right. Uh, right. The, uh, 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 having no seat belts represents a foreseeable harm. Right. And uh, if you, uh, or a hazard, uh, if you do a risk assessment, on the uh, unbelted uh, right. uh, situation, uh, you have a high hazard because there are no seat belts, but fortunately you have a low incidence of uh, school bus crashes. But when you combine those uh, right. elements, you wind up with uh, uh, these rare catastrophic events, right. Right. like uh, just like uh, Chattanooga. Well, uh, it, and. You know, it's like anything else. Eventually, the lawyers get involved, so it's the <laughs> and, and, and along those lines, uh, the uh, uh, because of all the evidence right. that has accumulated yeah. data on the school, the uh, uh, the seat belts preventing injuries and fatalities. The uh, uh, NHTSA has found that there's 50 percent uh, less injuries when you have seat when you wear your sure. seat belt. Uh, uh, having seat belts is becoming a standard of care. Sure. In other words, uh, if a reasonable person doesn't take steps, right. doesn't take these precautionary sure. steps, they're negligent. Right. So are there groups that oppose this at all? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I yeah. glossed over. The, yes, there are a, a couple of organizations that I've talked to that oppose seat belts. Uh, the National uh, uh, Association of, for Pupil Transportation uh, feels that uh, uh, the government, uh, the federal government, needs to mandate seat belts before they'll proceed. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, 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 the Ohio Association of uh, of uh, uh, school board members. Uh, uh, I don't think I have that exactly right, but they. Uh, 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 they oppose it as well. They feel, uh, or at least their spokesman feels that uh, uh, it's something nice to have, but not essential. Well, right. if, you, you, if you look at that video yeah. that uh, yeah. we've shown, uh, it's absolutely essential. Yeah. Uh, it, sure. Without seat belts, those kids go flying and right. hit whatever. Well, yeah, and, and you know, um, it's a frustration that... Um, that I'm sure you get because I think a lot of it just has to do with the bureaucracy and and it's it's so much of this is the way it's been yeah. so we're not right. going to do it and it just right. takes right. people I mean so what do you um what do you look at doing in the future with this what are your goals in the future well where uh, are you at and what are you trying to accomplish I okay. guess okay well uh, uh the um uh, uh, the, the goals that I have are three. Uh, number one is to, uh, uh, to alert uh, communities to the school bus safety concern that can be overcome, easily overcome with seat belts. Uh, the second thing is to help school districts deal with the issue and overcome any perceived problems. Right. And number three is to accumulate uh, or acquire funds, uh, not myself, but for the effort <laughs> Uh, to, you got uh, plenty of money. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, 
uh, to uh, acquire funds to support volunteer school districts conducting trials like sure. Avon Lake and, and Hudson. Uh, you know, the, the money would go directly to them and, and uh, I, I wouldn't have right. anything to do with it, except to try to raise these funds. And, uh, and I've told school districts that if they're willing to conduct uh, these voluntary trials, I would be willing to help them raise the funds. Sure. Uh, sure. I know the social uh, action organizations that I've spoke to many of, like uh, Rotary Club, that would be willing to chip in and uh, help uh, school districts uh, with uh, conducting right. trials. Right. Now, from your standpoint, so you have the props here that, that have the seat belts. I mean, you're available to go and give a presentation right. and talk uh, about this. Yeah, um, I, absolutely. Uh, I'm willing to go anywhere, uh, 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 anytime, uh, to any size audience. Sure. Uh, 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 any length of time to uh, uh, speak about this issue. Uh, right. I'd certainly prefer going to Honolulu, Hawaii, but yeah, well, uh, well yeah, as uh, long as they pay for you to get as there, as they mean. paid for my uh, trip. Well, yeah, but, you got to uh, haul that thing. With you. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to get it on the plane. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, certainly, I'm willing to do that to help out any organization. Uh, I've gone to city councils. I've gotten three cities to write resolutions. Uh, Lorraine, uh, Sandusky, and uh, Avon Lake, uh, uh, and, and Avon Lake to uh, uh, support uh, right. trials of uh, sure. uh, school districts. Uh, oh, uh, the other one uh, 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 was uh, Vermilion. Vermilion City Council has also uh, uh, given me a resolution uh, supporting uh, uh, seatbelts uh, in school buses, uh, trials for, for that to occur. Right. Okay. So, as we said in the beginning of the program, basically the last question is, from your standpoint, what does make common sense okay. and what does make sense and what does not make sense? Okay. Well, Whether it's this issue or something else you want to... Well, uh, uh, I would figure it'd be this issue. Well, you're absolutely right about that. We have children being killed and injured on, in school bus crashes, okay? We have uh, a, uh, a, a, a safety tool uh, that is uh, a low cost and proven. Uh, you know, uh, there's no doubt about that. Right. Uh, the, uh, uh, we have nine states uh, requiring seatbelts in school buses. And there's two more that have grant programs for seatbelts in school buses. So we okay. have 11 states. 22% of the states in the U.S. are favoring uh, right. seatbelts in school buses. Uh, we have federal agencies, uh, NHTSA and NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, that are concerned with school bus safety, uh, recommending that sure. this take place. The only w reason they don't mandate it is because some school districts might not be able to afford it. Uh, uh, we right, know and that's where the grant program would come in. Right, right. Uh, the, uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, the current uh, school bus safety features in Ohio are inadequate to protect children fully. Uh, we know compartmentalization that theory of protection, the primary theory of protection for kids in, accident, in accidents, is worthless. Right. I'll use that term worthless. It is. <laughs> in rollovers and side crashes. Sure. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, and uh, 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 the, um, uh, the opposition to seatbelts and school buses. Uh, I don't, I don't, you know, they, they refuse to accept the evidence that exists. Why they're doing it, I have no idea. Right. Well, okay. I could, I have my opinions, but well, I'll hold them. We, I'll we hold won't them. go into that. Yeah, yeah, I'll hold well, them. Well, let me summarize. Okay. The installation of seat belts in school buses is a recognized, a uh, substantial and critical improvement to school bus safety and really should be a priority for sure. all of us. Uh, I look at seatbelts like uh, 
uh, fire extinguishers. They're, they're an absolutely needed precaution to prevent right. catastrophic loss. Right. Uh, right. Usually when I give a presentation, the last thing I do is I take a survey. Uh, I say to folks, uh, uh, what, uh, 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 what about uh, fire extinguishers? Uh, do you think it's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher in your car? Sure. And, 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 um, I'm sorry, in, in your house. And uh, everybody will say, oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a good idea. And then I'll say, well, uh, how many of you would recommend that your child ride around in a car without a seatbelt? Nobody. Right. So I, you know. Uh, Much uh, less a, 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 you know, a baby seat. Right, right, right. So it's, uh, uh, so that, I, that's, that's how I make a point, and sure. then I tip my hat and, and, and say goodbye sure. uh, with that. So uh, uh, thanks very much All for... Right. Uh, for uh, well, we appreciate you coming in, Rudy, okay. and uh, I know that we're going to be doing several more of these, and we're putting them together. And if you have any questions for us or you want to give feedback on this program, there's going to be some email addresses coming up, and... Um, you can contact us there on either if you want to come and do a program with us or you have some ideas of people because we're, like I said, we're going to be, this is going to be an ongoing series that uh, Rudy and I do for different uh, people. We figured we'd start with ourselves to be the easiest way. So. Right. Um, so until next time, we hope to see you back. The preceding program was presented to you by a community producer. The statements, views, and opinions expressed were not necessarily those of ALC-TV or the City of Avon Lake.